there are three distinctions that I'm going to talk about uh, today and that we're going to focus on in this program of research. So one of them is this being side by Another is the distinction between actions and omissions. So uh, most people judge that it's worse to actively cause harm to someone, for instance, by throwing them in the water to drown, uh, than to merely allow somebody to be harmed. Uh, for instance, to see somebody who's drowning and to fail to help them when it would be easy for you to do so. And finally, although I won't say very much about it in this talk, uh, uh, part of the program of research is to look at the co contact and non-contact distinctions. Uh, most people judge that it's worse to cause harm with direct physical contact than to cause an equivalent harm without coming into physical contact with your victim. First of all, when we make intuitive judgments, automatic intuitive moral judgments, where do moral distinctions like these come from? What are their psychological origins? Then secondly, how do these intuitive moral judgments ultimately give rise to the sorts of explicit principles used by philosophers like Aquinas and Kant and policymakers like Bush? And then finally, once we have an explicit, articulable version of moral principle, what role does that play in our subsequent judgments of particular cases explained? Um, we can begin by locating regions in the brain that are sensitive to the causal action omission distinction. The way that we do this is to bring subjects into an fMRI scanner and show them events uh, like the sport of curling, where uh, either a, a consequence is brought about through an action or a consequence is merely allowed to occur and then contrast the levels of activity uh, across the brain in each of those two conditions, trying to locate the specific areas in the brain that respond more to actions than omissions when making causal judgments. Yeah. So, so far I've been focusing on this question of where distinctions like these come from and our automatic intuitive moral judgments. Now I want to turn to the question of how we can construct explicit moral principles and use those principles based on these kinds of distinctions. And the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to highlight as a case study the main side effect distinction, which, as you'll recall, is the distinction between causing harm essentially as collateral damage versus using harm as a means to your end. Right? And here's the methodology we can use to do that. We start by having them make judgments in these cases. Based on previous research, we know that they're going to have an intuitive response to these cases. And at some, what I'm going to call a baseline level, they're going to draw the action of I mean, the mean side effect distinction in, in their moral judgments. Okay, then we're going to ask them to justify why it is that some of these cases uh, they said were worse than others, right? And again, based on previous research, we know that at least two things are going to happen. Some subjects are going to be able to articulate an explicit principle that accounts for this pattern of judgment. Uh, but other subjects are going to exhibit what's called moral dumbfounding. That is, they're going to say, I don't know why I judged one of those cases worse than the other. It just seemed that way at the time. So critically, now we can ask them to make a new set of judgments about cases that also depend on the mean side of that distinction. And we can see uh, whether their baseline use of the distinction changes at all. So for folks who are able to articulate an explicit version of the moral principle, we predict that they now show greater use of the distinction. Because not only are they having an intuitive response, they also have a principle that dictates what their response should be in this type of a situation. So by comparing the responses to those people who have the principle and those people who don't have the principle at the end of the experiment, we can show that principles actually are being used and can change the way that we make moral judgments. And by comparing the use of the principle at the end of the experiment, after you've generated it, to the beginning of the experiment, before you've generated it, we can show that the principle was actually created right here in the water today. Uh, the important thing that this experiment, or the two important things that this experiment contribute are first of all to show that possibly these sort of Kantian moral distinctions actually can rely on principled reasoning. And secondly, to give us an account of the creation of principles in the first place, right? In, in particular, created from the intuitive judgments that we made previously. And so this brings me to the third final experiment. What we're going to do is use the same methodology from experiment two, but we're going to run it in the scanner. And our prediction is that in the beginning, when people are making intuitive judgments about these sorts of cases, they'll be relying on medial prefrontal cortex, just like Dobbs has demonstrated before. Uh, but then those who are able to articulate a principle will show a shift in processing down to dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Whereas those who uh, cannot articulate an explicit version of the principle will continue to 
psychological origins of these moral distinctions are ultimately in mechanisms that we use to understand actions and events in the world, uh, that these give rise to intuitive responses uh, to individual cases, and that then ordinary people engage in the same types of processes that philosophers do. That is, they can create moral principles <coughs> on the basis of their own intuitions, uh, and then ultimately use those moral principles to judge future relatively similar cases. All of this is important because ultimately, it's the moral principles that we create and that we explicitly represent that determine things like where we spend our money and where we drop our garments. So thanks very much for your uh, attention, and I look forward to your questions.